What is common between the Bali tiger, the Tacopa pupfish, the Pyrenean ibex, the South Castric brooding frog, the Pinta Island tortoise, the Western black rhinoceros, and the Great Auk? They're all gone. Dead, exterminated, extinct. These are just a handful of species amongst hundreds that have vanished from the face of the planet in the last 200 years. International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources estimates that up to 617 species may have vanished from the planet in the last 500 years or so. And the bad news is that about 77% of these species may have perished since the beginning of the 20th century. Who's behind this extinction? It's us, the human race. But hold on, is extinction not a natural process? Is Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest wrong? Are we witnessing a new trend in the last 500 years? Well, Darwin is not wrong, and extinction is a natural phenomenon. But the rate of extinction in recent years is so high that some scientists call it catastrophic and draw parallels with mass extinction events in the past. Then what is the difference between natural extinction and mass extinction events? And why are scientists so concerned about the current rate of extinction? Before we go into normal extinction rates, let us talk a little about mass extinctions. Now, there have been five mass extinction events that have occurred since the planet was formed 4.5 billion years ago. No one has been able to exactly pinpoint the reason for these mass extinctions, but generally point towards either asteroids and comets hitting the planet, giant volcanic eruptions and changes in the chemical composition of the Earth's atmosphere. These mass extinctions together wiped out more than 96% of Earth's species. The biggest by far and most damaging one took place 251 million years ago during the Permian-Triassic period. The last mass extinction is the most famous one. This happened 65 million years ago that wiped out among others dinosaurs, mosasaurs and ammonites. But extinctions take place even without calamitous events. And this is called the normal rate of extinction or the background extinction rate. The latest method to calculate background extinction rate says that if there are a million species, two would go extinct every year. To illustrate, let's take birds for instance. There are little more than 10,000 bird species in the world today. If the background rate held true, two species will disappear every 100 years. So in the 500 years for which IOCN has records, only 10 species of birds should have gone extinct. But in reality, 163 species may have disappeared. This is precisely the reason why scientists now believe that the current rate of extinction could actually mimic one of the five earlier mass extinction events. Recently, researchers from four US and a Mexican university came up with a study which highlights that human activity has pushed the extinction rate 100 times higher than normal. They say that under normal circumstances, nine vertebrate species should have gone extinct since the beginning of the 20th century instead of the 468 species that have fallen off the planet. The causes for this rapid extinction are not hard to find. We have cleared forests to build cities, to practice farming, to build factories and to keep livestock. We have not only hunted them for food, for fur and for other extravagant reasons. We have also destroyed their habitat, cut off their food supply and polluted the air, land and water making it extremely difficult for these species to survive. And it is funny because Homo sapiens emerged about 200,000 years ago, while some of these species have been around for a few hundred million years. Take the Nautilus for example, which has been around for over 500 million years and survived the past five mass extinctions, but may not survive human beings because of overfishing for their beautiful tubular shells. In this short span of time, we have already taken up most of the space on this planet. By mass, humans make up about a third of all land vertebrates. And if one was to factor in livestock like cows, sheep, pigs, etc., it would push the needle up to 95%. On the other hand, wild animals collectively make only 5% by mass. Researchers have warned that if the current rate of extinction continues, it will only take three human lifetimes for most of the world's biodiversity to perish. Humans often forget that the modern world has been built using the foundation of the ecological services that the planet has provided us. The services of the humble earthworm or the ant to manage soil 
the bee to pollinate crops and the bats as natural pest control are just a few examples. Without these creatures, agriculture probably would never have been possible. Therefore, every time we lose a species, we crack the foundation that we stand on by a tiny bit. During mass extinction events, it is the top predator that is the first to perish. And if there is a sixth mass extinction, it will be us, Homo sapiens, should we not be scared?